lesson I'm going to explain the concept of price elasticity of supply. This is one of the types of elasticity we study in economics in addition to the price elasticity of demand and the income and cross price elasticities of demand. We're going to define PES, talk about the formula for PES, interpret the possible values that you can get when calculating PES, and finally conclude with the determinants of price elasticity of supply, looking at two goods as our examples. The two goods we'll examine for our examples are the supply of cotton and the supply of blue jeans. Clearly these two goods are related in that cotton is a resource used to produce blue jeans. And the characteristics of these two goods will help determine the responsiveness of producers to price changes in a particular period of time. First, let's start with the definition of price elasticity of supply. PES is a measure of the responsiveness of producers to price changes. In this way, it's a lot like price elasticity of demand, which focuses on the responsiveness of consumers to price changes. The formula for PES is also very familiar with someone who has already studied price elasticity of demand. In fact, it's the exact same formula. However, instead of examining the percent change in the quantity demanded for a good, we simply measure the percentage change in the quantity supplied of a good and divide that by the percentage change in the price between two prices. If you don't know the percentage changes in quantities and price, you can calculate them when you have two prices and two quantities from a supply graph or a supply schedule. To find the percentage change in quantity, you take Q2 minus Q1 and divide it by Q1 and you do the same method to find the percentage change in price. Let's do a quick example. Let's assume that in our graph on the right here, P1 equals $40, P2 equals $50, and we'll look at the responsiveness of blue jeans producers to the change in the price from P1 to P2. Assume that Q1 in our graph on the right is 3,000 pairs of blue jeans, and Q2 is 7,200. We can now calculate the price elasticity of demand for blue jeans between $40 and $50. Let's first calculate the percent change in the quantity. We take Q2, that's 7,200, subtract Q1, that's 3,000, and divide by 3,000. This gives us an increase in the quantity supplied of blue jeans of 140%, and we can divide that by the percent change in price. We take P2, $50, subtract P1, $40, divide by P1, $40, that gives us an increase in the price of 25%. Now we can calculate the PES for blue jeans between $40 and $50. In response to a 25% increase in the price, the quantity supplied of blue jeans increased by 140%. So the PES coefficient is 140 divided by 25. That gives us a PES of 5.6. What does that number tell us? The number 5.6 tells us the following. For every 1% increase in the price, the quantity supplied increased by 5.6%. In fact, that's what the coefficient for price elasticity of supply will always tell us. Whatever the value is, it tells us by how much, as a percentage, the quantity supplied will increase for every 1% increase in the price. Of course, if the price of a good falls, then the quantity supplied will decrease. And the coefficient would tell us by how much quantity supply would decrease for every 1% decrease in the price. Whenever you calculate price elasticity of supply, you're going to get a positive number. This, of course, tells us that there is a positive relationship between a good's price and the quantity that producers are willing and able to supply. The possible values you end up with for price elasticity of supply tell you whether the supply of a good is relatively elastic or relatively inelastic. The lowest possible value, of course, is zero. A price elasticity of supply of zero would indicate that there is perfectly inelastic supply, meaning that there will be no change in the quantity supplied no matter how much the price changes. Goods for which supply is perfectly inelastic are quite rare. However, they do exist. Some goods simply exist in fixed amounts. For example, the amount of seats in a football stadium is perfectly inelastic. No matter what the price people are willing and able to pay for those seats, in the short term at least, a football stadium can't increase the quantity of seats that it can supply. Therefore, the number of seats in a football stadium might be limited to, say, 60,000, no matter what the price of tickets are. But for most goods, there's a direct relationship between price and quantity, and the PES coefficient will therefore be something greater than zero. Let's look at the values here. Any price elasticity of supply coefficient between zero and one represents relatively 
inelastic supply. The percent change in quantity supplied will be smaller than the percent change in price. We say that a good with a PES of less than one has an inelastic supply. However, if a good, such as our blue jeans here, has a PES of greater than one, we say that it has relatively elastic supply. This means that producers are relatively responsive to price changes. The percent change in the quantity supplied will be greater than the percent change in the price. Later on in this lesson, we'll talk about some determinants of PES to try to understand why supply for a particular good might be elastic or inelastic. That brings us to the next part of our presentation here. Let's have a look over at our graph. In addition to blue jeans, I've also graphed the supply curve for cotton on this graph. As you can see, a 25% increase in the price of blue jeans led to a 140% increase in the quantity supplied of blue jeans. This reflects a highly elastic supply curve. The slope of the supply curve for blue jeans is relatively flat. A particular percentage increase in price will lead to a much larger percentage increase in quantity supplied as we move along a flatter supply curve. A relatively steep supply curve like that for cotton we see in our graph represents a relatively inelastic supply for a good. The same 25% increase in the price of cotton led to only a 10% increase in the quantity supplied of cotton. So we can actually calculate the PES for cotton between P1 and P2. The percent increase in the quantity supplied was only 10, following a 25% increase in the price of cotton. This means that the PES for cotton is only 0.4, whereas the PES for blue jeans, which are made out of cotton, was much greater at 5.6. What can explain the differences in the price elasticities of supply for the primary good that goes into making blue jeans and for blue jeans themselves? That brings us down to our determinants of PES. There are only a couple determinants of PES, in fact. The primary determinant of PES is the mobility of the factors of production that go into producing a good. Factors of production, of course, include land, labor, and capital. And whether producers of a good can be highly responsive or will be relatively unresponsive to price changes depends primarily on how quickly can land, labor, and capital be mobilized towards the production or out of production following a price change. Goods for which resources can be mobilized relatively quickly, such as blue jeans, which require low-skilled workers and factory equipment and raw materials such as cotton and blue dyes, can be mobilized relatively quickly. If the price of blue jeans rises by 25%, it's really easy for blue jean manufacturers to increase their production quickly. However, cotton is a very different story. Primary commodities such as cotton and other raw materials which are mined or grown, primary commodities tend to have highly inelastic supply curves, in the short run at least, due to the fact that resources cannot be quickly allocated towards raw materials. Think of it this way. Look at our supply curve for cotton. If the price of cotton rises tomorrow by 25%, how quickly can cotton producers increase their production? Cotton is not like blue jeans. You can't simply have workers stay longer hours at the factory and operate your factory on weekends and expect to produce more cotton. Cotton is a crop that is planted and months later it is harvested. If the price of cotton rises in the short run, cotton farmers cannot quickly plant and harvest new cotton in the short amount of time following the price change. The only reason that the quantity supplied is able to be increased at all is because goods like cotton can actually be stored in warehouses and therefore inventories can be tapped into in order to increase the quantity supplied following the price hike. Manufactured goods, on the other hand, tend to have more elastic supplies since resources can be more quickly mobilized to increase or decrease output following a price change. So the main determinant of price elasticity of supply is how quickly resources can be increased or decreased towards the goods production. Generally speaking, primary commodities, anything that is mined or farmed, have relatively inelastic supplies. This is because producers of these goods cannot quickly ramp up output in response to price changes or cannot quickly decrease output in case price falls since whatever is produced in a particular period of time is what there is available on the market. In fact, that brings us to our next determinant of supply. The more time that follows a price change, the more responsive producers can be. This, of course, relates very closely to resource mobility. The more time following a price change, the more responsive producers can be. Therefore, 
the more elastic supply is. Even cotton farmers can respond to price changes once they've had time to plant new crops, to take land that might have been used for the production of other agricultural goods and plant cotton on that land. So if we look back at our graph, the supply of cotton in the week or two weeks following the 25% increase in price might be highly inelastic and we might only see a 10% increase in the quantity supplied. However, over time, it wouldn't be unusual to expect the supply of cotton to become more elastic. If price were to remain high, cotton producers could become more responsive to the higher price, and we'd expect to see a supply of cotton curve that looks more like this line. SC1 represents the supply of cotton in the long run. The same 25% increase in price would lead to a much larger increase in the quantity supplied now, as producers would be able to respond by planting more land with cotton, harvesting that cotton, and bringing it to market. So when it comes to the amount of time following a price change, of course, the greater amount of time producers have to respond to price changes, the more responsive they can be. Therefore, time is a major determinant of price elasticity of supply. So looking back at our determinants of PES here, primarily it has to do with how quickly producers can allocate resources towards or out of the production of particular goods. Manufactured goods, technological goods tend to have highly elastic supplies relative to primary commodities and other goods that require lots of expensive capital to produce. For example, if we we're going to compare the supply of jumbo jets to the supply of smartphones, which supply curve, the blue one or the green one, do you think represents the supply of jumbo jets in a particular period of time? Think about it for a second. Jumbo jets require lots of very expensive capital to produce. Building a factory in which jumbo jets are produced might require a year or even longer. Therefore, producers of jumbo jets are going to be relatively unresponsive to changes in the price compared to producers of smartphones. Smartphones can be produced in the same factories that are used to produce other technological goods such as MP3 players or tablet computers. If the price of smartphones were to rise, smartphone producers would be much more responsive to a price increase than jumbo jet producers would be in a particular period of time. However, you give Boeing and Airbus enough time to respond to price changes and they'll be able to ramp up their production just as much as smartphone producers could in the short run. So the amount of time and the mobility of resources are the primary determinants of price elasticity of supply. The formula is the same as it is for PED except we look at the quantity supplied rather than the quantity demanded. And the values that you get when calculating PES can range from zero to infinity. A value of zero would represent perfectly inelastic supply, and a value of infinity would represent perfectly elastic supply. So that wraps up our lesson on price elasticity of supply.